Hindistan doğumlu Avustralya vatandaşı olan Doktor Mevlüt Ünalem şu anda Ankara'da Türkiye AB ortak finansmanlı bir proje için takım lideri olarak çalışmaktadır. Avustralya ve diğer ülkelerdeki Uygur toplulukları arasında iyi bilinen bir Uygur entelektüeli olan Ayla'nın Belçika Katolik Üniversitesi'nden felsefe üzerine doktora derecesi vardır. Uygur meselesi hakkında makaleler kaleme alan Uygur kültürü soykırımı üzerinde kitap çalışması yürüten Sayın Mevlüt Ünalay'ı alkışlarınızla kürsüye davet ediyorum. Merhabalar. Benim Türkçem çok kötü. <gülüyor> Çünkü ben Türkiye'de bir altı ay oldum ama ben benim sunum dilim İngilizce ama burada Türkçe çevresi var. So, good afternoon. So, my topic is a bit depressing. And First of all, I should say thanks to my colleagues, uh, Maya Mutelipova and Mr. Bumer Kanat, because they have shed some light on some aspects of what I am going to tell you. So I have given 20 minutes. I have two challenges. First, language. It's not that I can't speak English, though I can't speak Czech fluently, but language, any language, including English, Czech, Uyghur, or Chinese, whatever, is not capable enough to convey the depths of the tragedy that Uyghur people are facing. No language is capable. Even Secondly, time. 20 minutes far from being sufficient for me to give you what the Uyghurs are going through. And unfortunately, in Turkey, I have most of Turkish colleagues. When I talk about the Uyghur crisis, they usually don't believe in what I have told them. Why? Some of them say that this is a conspiracy, the US fabricated conspiracy. So, second one is, this is unbelievable. And there's a very beautiful Turkish expression, insanın aklı almaz. It's beyond human rationality. And hence, it's absurd. Why it's absurd? Because you, can, you don't believe in what I'm going to tell you. It's beyond the rationality of any human being on earth to believe in what I'm talking to you. And number three is, there is some naive belief among some Turkish people that China is benign power vis-a-vis -vis the US. And thanks to again Mr. Umer Kanat that China is one of the evil powers on Earth. Not because it's communist country or communism-based country, but because its behavior, its very harsh and in inhuman treatment of Uyghurs has never seen in human history. You will see that. So this is the photo that China accidentally published in 2017, saying that the, all this, the camps, what the Chinese call is re-education camps, are helping Uyghurs to overcome Islamic terrorism, de-extermination, etc. But against Chinese intention, this photo has forever become the icon of the face of Uyghurs who are speechless. And we are here, few Uyghurs, have been able to give you some information about Uyghurs, but these faces, we don't know how many of them are alive and how many of them are gone. We don't know that. Because the whole communication with our country, East Turkestan, has been cut off by the China. So, first of all, Uyghurs are Turkish. Am I stupid to tell you that Uyghurs are Turkish? We all know that Uyghurs are Turkish and Turkish are Uyghurs. Same. I am in that. And why I am telling that Uyghurs are Turkish? Because China said that Uyghurs are not Turkish. Why? Because China wants us to be alone. 
having no cultural affinity with any other countries, any other peoples, including Turkey. For China, Turkey is such an important country in the Middle East and beyond. And today, our rector, Mr. Sedat Murad said about Ilga Khaqan's statements. The conflict between Turkish people and the Chinese people have lasted for the past 2,000 years. And we are the last fighters on the battleground. But unfortunately, Uyghurs are left along this battleground. And if our ties with the Turkish brothers and sisters are cut off, and Uyghurs have no other people on earth to talk about us. And secondly, I don't want to talk about this, this history too much. It's, it's sufficient for me to say that Uyghurs are Turkish. Because the China also published a wide paper saying that Uyghurs are not Turkish. And there's an official statement made by the Chinese government about this. And Uyghurs in, created two independent states prior to the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949. One in the first one was established in 1933, second one is 1944. Both of them called is Eastern Republic. And unfortunately, the Eastern Republic was annexed by the Chinese government in 1949. And since then we have been we have become a colony of the Chinese government. So what are our grievances? First of all, since 1949, we have lost all our rights. And most importantly, which is the most important power that if a people, if a people lose, then they will lose everything. Who can tell me? What's the most important power or rights of a people? Who can tell me? No. What's the, what's the rights? What's the most important rights of Turkish people? In terms of human rights, political rights. Political rights are foundation of all other rights. And we have lost these rights. Since then, all other rights, linguistic rights, the religious rights, cultural rights, you can name. And the most important thing, Uyghur language has been banned at all levels. Now, nobody can speak. Even people are afraid to, to speak Uyghur language. Recently, there was a visit made by the Albanian reporter. He greeted with Uyghur people saying, Assalamu alaikum. And the Uyghur person responded to this saying that, Ni hao, which means that, how are you? Or Nasasen in Turkish. So they are not able, not only to greet in Arabic, Assalamu alaikum, but also in Uyghur. So if you speak Uyghur language, it's a sign of Terrorism. So, since 2017, we faced unprecedented genocide. Some people call it cultural genocide, some people call it the gross <coughs> violations of human rights, and I call it the genocide as such, in the strict sense of the word. And why it's called genocide? Because more than Three, at least 3 million, or between 3 million to and 5 million Uyghurs have been put in the concentration camps, or what's called is Nazi-style concentration camps. Jewish people say that never again in, after the Second World War. But this never again is happening again in East Turkestan on a daily basis. And how Beijing, how does Beijing see the Uyghur issue? The Uyghurs, and I'm proud of being Uyghur, the whole world is afraid to challenge China, including Muslim walls. But Uyghurs must stand alone on the ground against China. And that's why I am proud of being Uyghur. No country, even the US, is struggling to contain the US, China. We have nothing. Our hands are empty. But we were never surrendered to China. We didn't put our hands up like this. Our hands 
We are showing China that our hands are empty. Show you mercy. Show you humanity. But the response is violence, killing, and putting people on mass in the concentration camps. And hence, Uyghurs have refused to be Chinese. We have paid deadly price for this refusal to become China, Chinese. Why? Everybody is so fond of China, admire China, saying that in Turkey, this is quite common perception that I have seen among my friends, that China is a great country. I know that China is a great country, but I don't want to be China or Chinese. Why? Because I have my own culture. I have my own Turkish culture that I am proud of. I want to die for my own culture, my own religion, and my own language. And that's why we are paying this deadly price. And 1911 tragedy in New York was a nightmare, not only for the US, not only for the Muslims all around the world, and ultimately a nightmare for us. Because China has used the terrorism charges against Uyghurs indiscriminately, perceiving that we are potentially terrorists. And that is still the justification of China for the establishment and maintenance of these concentration camps. Now, I have spoken about this. The first of all, the current situation in East Turkestan is the existence of the concentration camps. So, these are the concentration camps. These are the people and these concentration camps revealed to the world last year. There was one survivor of the concentration camps. He came to Turkey first and then he left for a European country. Now he is living in Holland. He exposed to the world how horrific the life inside concentration camps. And later on, there's also another German scholar. He used satellite images. So that's the top left satellite images. By using satellite images to identify the location of the concentration camps all around East Turkestan. So I would like to show you this wall on left, the Uyghur intellectuals. More than 100,000 Uyghur intellectuals, including famous writers, uh, artists, everybody is now put in the concentration camps. What's their crime or what's why they are there? Because Chinese government say that they are two-faced which means that they are not loyal to the Communist Party, while they are harboring their nationalist or Turkish identity. And that's why they have, a, they have put in the concentration camps to punish all intellectuals. At this stage, now, there is no one single famous Uyghur intellectual outside of the concentration camps. We are here, very few of us here, to be able to show you the how Uyghur intellectuals are. But we are very few. We can't represent the whole Uyghur people because tens of thousands of Uyghurs are in jails and in concentration camps, languishing inside. And also, these are the Uyghur kids. You can't recognize the difference between Uyghur kids and Chinese kids. They are dressed up like Chinese, they sing the Chinese uh, songs, and their whole mind, this is the great mind engineering uh, campaign. It's called the psychological warfare against the Uyghurs. So they, they try to re-engineer our mind to be faithful to the Chinese uh, government. Now, more than one million Uyghur kids are separated from their parents who have been put in the concentration camps. One million Uyghur kids. Now you will ask me, where is your future? I don't know. I am terrified to, to answer this question. I don't know where is my future. Where is the future of Uyghurs? We don't know that. Because one million Uyghurs are subject to the state terrorism. They are terrorized to go through this mind engineering campaign without knowing the effect of this. 
And also, they are also terrorized to be separated from their own parents. Why? Because again, they are Uyghurs, they are Jewish. As simple as, of course, there are some complicated issues, but I would like to, to simplify. I, am, I know that I am committing uh, emotional crime now to simplify the pain of Uyghurs, but I am quite aware of this. And so, and most importantly, the, all the famous, more than 3,000 mosques are demolished. 3,000 mosques. Religious life is almost, almost destroyed. If a Uyghur Muslim is afraid to say Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum aslam, which means that religion is dying out. And that's our religious life. Ah, there is one child, Uyghur child, frozen to death. And it never did elicit the sympathy of the world. We have lots of dark kids all around the world, and their photos created a huge hype, emotional response, political response. But this child almost didn't at least any sympathy. So, we was a people who are really inside out. Why inside out? Which means that the whole infrastructure, whole infrastructure of Uyghur society is, is, is destroyed. And most importantly, their soul, their mind, their brain are being destroyed as well. Then, what are we going to become? Are we going to become a lot of robotics or zombies that we say yes to our Chinese bosses? And this is, again, the horrible thoughts to think about. And most importantly, what we have lost is our faith. Our religious face, and our and most again, the face in our future. This is something that we should not lose. But unfortunately, we are rapidly uh, in a position where we are challenged to lose our face in our future because of the, the level, the depths of the destruction that we are facing. Now, this genocide. What is the impact of genocide on Uyghurs? I will tell you, without exaggeration, that I told my psychologist friends in Australia that it's miraculous to see that I am sane, not insane. In Turkish, it's called daily or psychological uh, uh, patient. I'm still able to tell you our stories. Me personally. I don't believe that I have that rational mind to say this because of the level of impact of this genocide upon me, my family, my friends, and everybody, all Uyghurs. And I also, in Australia, I did a lot of research about the psychology, psychology of uh, refugees. I managed the program for seven years. I know how this uh, trauma has impact on the people. And this impact is not only temporary impact, it's everlasting intergenerational impact. So, so in the future, as I said, our identity is under threat, our future is uncertain, and world is still silent. You would ask me that which country is supporting you, and it is only West, in particular US and some European countries are supporting us. But none of the head of the state has ever said to China that stop this genocide against innocent Uyghurs. None of them. Why? Perhaps you know the answer. Because China is too powerful? Yes. Uyghurs are too powerless? Yes. And most importantly, there is economic relationship, yes. But today, our tragedy will become the tragedy of the other peoples all around the world. It's just a matter of time. Today we are crying, tomorrow you will cry. Because enemy is the same. Thank you. Same. I like to